we are seeing a board game boom of sorts, and board games are becoming increasingly more important in the modern gaming group. Video games are kind of getting pushed to the side some nights, and cardboard and pencils and paper come out. Many of us used to play a whole slew of split-screen games, from Smash Brothers to Mario Kart to Halo and Call of Duty and Ridge Racer and a ton more. We would love huddling around too small of a CRT just to push our friends over when you realize one of them was obviously screen cheating the entire time. I say this in the past tense because split-screen has ultimately been scrapped for the most part. And it's a shame, really. But just like I never got bored of heaving bags of chips down the street along with my Mad Cat's GameCube controller to beat my friend in Pikmin, neither did many others. We love all of these newfangled multiplayer games because we lost that physical interaction with other people we kind of crave. I think this is why board games came back to scratch that itch. Now unfortunately today we won't be doing a review of Viticulture, even though it's absolutely fantastic. But I did just kind of want to talk about board games in general, and about what makes all this fancy, expensive cardboard so special. Ugh. I very frequently talk about what makes a board game physically beautiful, likening these boxes to pieces of art that you put on a shelf instead of pinning to a wall. I often refer to Twilight Imperium's child size box as one that I may never actually play, but I will never regret putting it on top of my tallest shelf. So with all of this aside, what makes a tabletop experience? When I say tabletop games, I mean manual games, where all of your friends are sitting around a table and running every part of it. This distinction is important because, as you will see in my next video, I believe that board games and role-playing games are both cut from the exact same cloth. Now they both use different components and different materials, but in the end, they both achieve the same sort of wonder. But tabletops bring people together, not only physically to a friend's dining room table or a ping pong table in their parents' basement, but also just unifying under one very specific love for cardboard and imagination. As human beings, we are about as physical as it gets. That's the reason hyper-consumerism exists, yes, even in board games. Especially in board games, looking at you people that own both Agricola and Caverna. And hyperconsumerism exists because of our love for things. We love new things, we love finding old things, we love revisiting nostalgic things, and we absolutely love tactile things. Hiking and virtual reality both exist because we love interacting with our environment, we love touching the things around us. I mean, there's a reason every time you play Ticket to Ride, you line up all your trains like a little Civil War battalion on the edge of the board. So when you pull Kodama off of your shelf, you dump out all of its tiny little bits and wonderful cards, and you build your trees like freeform Legos. It practically turns you on. Now this is something that's been shifted by video games. A lot is held back from you when you only have five buttons to interact and enjoy your environment. But gaming in general is a social function. It's a conversation between players and a plug-and-play system. So when you throw six random strangers from all around the world into a matchmaking lobby on King's Row, some of that social magic is lost. In the end, we don't always want to be thrust into 60 overstimulating death matches all in one night. Sometimes we just want to gather our friends together around a table, pull out some miniatures, some cardboard, pen and paper, books, and create something create a narrative, a strategy, a thriving engine, a history of decisions, and a future of carefully planned out actions. In the end, we just want a story fueled by beautiful things. Thank you all for watching kind of a rambly video. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have an Indiegogo. I don't have any games I've created, and I don't write books. So you can't really support me. But if you want to watch some more videos, I have a few other board game reviews and discussions, and I'll have some more up soon. The next video will be on role-playing games, a lot of the ones that you've seen in this video. So grab some friends, blow the dust off your GameCube, gather around an old CRT monitor, and maybe beat them in Pikmin. Have a good night.